Another common problem with water supply lines is too much pressure. It makes for a great shower, but it's not so good for the fixtures in your house. There's a bunch of things that contribute to the problem, like if they're planning to build a, a bunch of maybe a new subdivision in your area, they might add a water tank or something of that nature to increase the pressure in anticipation of those homes. But until they're actually built, that increased pressure is being forced into your house unless you have a water pressure regulator. They look like this, and they're most commonly found on the main incoming water supply line. Now, they might be in your crawl space, they might be up by your water heater, and occasionally you'll find them on the main water line in the yard. But if you haven't seen one of these, and you check your water pressure, and it is above 70, 75, no more than 80, if it's above 75 or 80, you need to install one of these. It's going to make the pressure adjustable, and it, from the factory, it's going to reduce it to 60 to 65 PSI, which is a good, comfortable place. Plenty of pressure for a shower, and yet not so much that it wears out the rubber seats and valves and things of that nature in your other plumbing things. It can be very hard on faucets. It'll make tubs drip. Um, it'll make the temperature pressure relief valves in your water heater drip and leak and wear out quicker. Uh, there's a number of problems that it causes. These are not that expensive, $34 or $35 for this unit itself. You'll need to buy the adapters, um, depending on if you have copper or PEX or what your supply line is. The most important thing to start with is to find out where to put it. If your water supply line comes out near your water heater and then branches off towards the cold supplies and keeps going into the water heater, then that's a great location to install this. But if the water line coming out of your wall to your water heater just goes straight to the water heater with no branch offs, it means the cold is already branched off and if you install it there, it's only going to adjust the pressure on your hot side. So in that case you would need to go in the crawl space or maybe dig out a section of the line in the yard, install it down there and put a meter box around it. Either way, the principles of installation on the pipe are pretty similar and uh, we'll go over those real quick. The pressure regulator comes with a flanged fitting on this side with a rubber o-ring. Now what that allows you to do is slide it in under closer tolerances, get it together, and then turn the nut to get it locked up tight. Now you'll still need to put fittings on both sides, um, but this will allow you to, to get it in there in a much more tighter circumstance. So for copper, we've got, oh those are the PEX fittings, we've got the copper fittings here that are basically three-quarter male that go to a three-quarter copper. Now, what you need to do, you need to remember this is a threaded fitting, so it's going to need some seal, some thread sealant. This is T plus two, it's a really common one. You just want to make sure it's in the initial couple of grooves all the way around. And once it is, you can thread it into your fitting and be ready to go. So we'll get some more of that on here real quick. Even though we're not putting it under pressure, we might as well pretend we're being as real as possible. So we've got this in and on. Oop. Stuff's kind of messy, be prepared. Once these are screwed in properly, you'll need a wrench or two to get them tight. A couple of turns should be more than enough. Now, you have to determine placement on your pipe. Now, once these fittings are in and tight, the easiest way to do that, in my experience, look at that, I used my pen pocket. Did everybody see that? That was cool. I used my pen pocket, that's silly. You've got your Sharpie out. You're gonna want about a half an inch of penetration, which comes to the front of the fitting. Now, if you come into the front of the fitting, you're going to make a mark there and a mark there. Set this to the side so that we can get this pipe cut. Now, if you've already watched the how to solder section, you're already familiar with the tool I'm using. There it goes. Get this section cut clear and be ready here in just a second. Now, much like in your house, you can expect some movement of the copper. 
There's usually a little bit of play where it'll bury it back into the wall and the like. So that's not unusual at all. You'll actually need that later on because you need it to get out of the way so that you can slide it past itself. Now at this point, the easiest way to do this is to prep these ends the way you know you should if you've watched the soldering section. Get that placed in there, get that soldering taken care of. I almost lost the O-ring, it fell out of, well, look at that. Ah, little sucker doesn't want to cooperate today, that's okay. We'll get the O-ring pushed back in there. We're going to need to solder this fitting on, so we really need that O-ring to get out of the way because that O-ring will get damaged by the heat. So it was running for a good reason. Now once that's on and tight and you've got those ends prepped, you solder this, this uh, joint here, solder this fitting on here as well. And then at this point, you should be able to bring the pipes back together, tighten. Oh, look, I almost forgot the O-ring, didn't I? That would have leaked like crazy. So with the nut back in position and the O-ring in place, slide these sides together. Get that nice and tight. And once your joints are soldered, and you've got this nice and tight. Turn on the water, double check your pressure at a hose spigot. Make sure it's where you want it to be. Um, I like a little higher pressure myself, so I might adjust it up into the 70 area if it was at 60. Um, you put it wherever you're comfortable, just try and keep it below 80. That's the basics of the installation there. You saw how we marked it. We gave a half an inch on each side. We removed that section, and you basically tighten the pressure regulator in place. Now, for PEX fittings, for PEX plumbing, if, you've got, if you're fortunate enough to have PEX in your house, the basic installation techniques are very, very similar. So we'll address those real quick here. You're going to put thread sealant on the fittings, just like you did for the copper. Now, what would make me think I'm going to get that off with my bare hands? Once you've removed the fittings, then you can reuse the pressure regulator a million different times for all of your demonstrations. Okay, once the once your PEX fittings, which look like this, have been properly thread sealed, you're going to screw them in the same way with just enough tension to hold them in place and to make sure they seal. Basically, we need to pre-assemble this so we know exactly how large of a piece of PEX to cut out of the way. I'm using this adjustable wrench to hold this uh, round fitting still while I get this fitting in nice and tight, okay? Now once that's in nice and tight, we've got it fairly well assembled now. Now, based on the PEX installations, you want it to go to the base of the fitting if at all possible. So we're going to make a mark that's going to leave enough PEX to go up to the top of the fitting. A basic tubing cutter here to take care of the PEX. Set that aside. Got a couple of crimp rings here, which need to slide on first. If you haven't yet watched how to install PEX, dig that chapter out. PEX has got some flexibility, so it cooperates in tighter areas a little better than copper does. But you're basically going to bring the pipe together, bring the fittings up to where they need to be. Bring out a PEX crimping tool that will allow you to get a good grip on them and crimp them to the size they need to be. And using the test guide, you make sure the fitting is the right size. Good. 
Awesome. Now at this point, make sure this is tight. Use wrenches on all your fittings to double check its tightness. Turn on the water supply. Make sure there's no leaks. And then test and reset the pressure accordingly. Now your fixtures throughout the house are protected from the issues revolving around high pressure. All right, one thing you need to make sure of, there is an arrow right there. It's on both sides. It's pointing towards my finger. That is the direction of the flow for the water, and you have to make sure this is installed according to the flow of your, of your main water line coming in. If it's installed backwards, it will impede the water flow, not just restrict it. So make sure you've got this installed in the proper direction. Have fun.